Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Let me let me thank you for joining us. And before I begin, you see a lot of folks around here in their their emergency operation vests and sitting at their post, and others who are not here. But I want to thank our city employees, all of our volunteers, nonprofits, faith organizations, so many who have stepped up over the last week to support our sheltering and reunification efforts uh, by the city. Uh, right now, we got city employees from multiple agencies on the ground, uh, pulled from regular duties of, of managing the city and working around the clock to support the migrants and asylum seekers who've made their way to Denver. We've got our partners uh, from Denver Health who are on site providing mobile medical services to those who need it. We've got local churches who've come forward to stand in a gap with beds, space, and volunteers to help us shelter more people. We want to send a sincere thank you to our churches. And we've got nonprofits helping, to, helping us collect donations to provide uh, for these individuals and families. To you as well, our nonprofit partners, we say thank you. And of course, we've got hundreds of Denver residents coming forward to donate clothing and other supplies. You know, it never ceases to amaze me uh, that, at the generosity of this community and where people step up to help those who are in need. And so we want to thank our residents who have called, who have emailed, who have texted, who have showed up to donate and to make sure that we're able to help our uh, migrants and asylum seekers who have come to Denver. When we started to see this influx last week, when residents started sending us messages, messages, they weren't asking why these people were here and why aren't we stopping them. They were asking how can we help. And so that meant a lot to us, and I know it means a lot to those who have made their way to Denver. But that's the hallmark of a welcoming city, and I've never, I've been, never been prouder of our city, our residents and folks from neighboring cities than, those, than these moments that we are experiencing now and for those folks who have come forward to help. So thank you on behalf of this city, for everyone who is doing and for doing everything they can uh, to support this effort. Now, as you all know, starting last week, Denver began to see an influx of migrants and asylum seekers from communities along the southern border, mostly coming from, we believe, El Paso, El Paso Texas. Denver has been seeing groups of migrants come to our city for the past several months now which has been uh, which we have been preparing for and expecting, but it's been only recently that we've uh, that they've been arriving. They've been arriving here at the volume and and without any type of advance notice uh, that we may have had uh, received uh, previously uh, to their presence and their arrival. In response, I activated our emergency operations center to help coordinate sheltering operations, reunification efforts and other needs to support these individuals and families while they were in our community. We also have been in constant contact with our federal, state, our federal, state, and regional partners to keep them informed of the situation on the ground and where they may be opportunities uh, for their support. Since Monday alone, 247 additional people have arrived in Denver. Right now, the city and partners are sheltering some 411 individuals. Even with the support from local churches to temporarily house additional people, uh, the first of our emergency shelters, which was utilizing a recreation center, reached its capacity of 275 people. In response, yesterday, as you've reported, we activated an additional recreation center to serve as an emergency shelter for up to 100 individuals, as well as another rec Creation Center to serve as a centralized reception location where people can go for intake and to be directed to one of our emergency shelters. Up to this point, folks who've been coming here have been arriving at various locations downtown and making their way to our homeless shel shelters, which has put an additional burden on that system as we start to experience more winter weather. So let me be frank. This influx of migrants, the anticipated nature of their arrival, and our current space and staffing challenges have put an immense strain on city resources to the level where they're on the verge of reaching a breaking point at this time. What I don't want to see 
is a local humanitarian crisis of unsheltered migrants on our hands because of the lack of resources. Due to this current situation today, I'm issuing an emergency declaration for the city and county of Denver. This declaration will give us another tool in our toolbox to free up and secure resources and streamline processes, including funding and sheltering options to support these folks while they're here and as we work to reunify them with friends, family, and their desired destinations. While we're taking this step now, I want to uh, reiterate our call to the nonprofit, business, and faith communities to help with additional support, especially with sheltering space. If you have space available, please email us at the donations at, uh, and, and if you have donations as well, we want to hear from you at the denvergov.org or by going to denvergov.org slash OEM so we can send folks out to evaluate your space uh, that you may propose for sheltering. We also need volunteers, and I have walked the shelter, and I've spoken with city staff, and i got to tell you, it is very, very uh, difficult for them as they have pulled some long uh, shifts to cover our facilities. Uh, we're asking our community to come forward and help us to cover these, uh, this opportunity at the sheltering space. Our staffing levels are currently stretched extremely thin, and staffing is one of our main factors in determining how many people we can shelter at a given location. So if you want to volunteer, we ask you to also go to denvergov org slash OEM, and there is a link there where you can sign up and we get you processed. Now, while this is a difficult challenge to manage right now, as we did with COVID, we're going to deploy every resource we have at our disposal and to keep people healthy and safe because that's what we're called to do right now. We understand this is placing additional burdens on our residents, including those who depend on our rec centers, uh, but I'm asking our residents for patients while we work through this so we don't have to uh, do even more or go through even more difficult situation uh, in the weeks ahead. I will make one final statement then we'll open up for questions. This is, um, I can tell you, as challenging of an immediate circumstance as we have seen in our city. This city is resilient though. Um, I look around and see city employees. These are the same folks who came down in this in this uh, center to save our city uh, almost three years ago and we're committed to doing what we can for uh, the migrants and the the asylum seekers who've come here but cities all over this country are once again having to respond because of the failure of our congress and federal government to address a very cr critical situation uh, this is a clarion call to our elected officials at the federal level to put aside politics and recognize the humanitarian crises that have come to our borders and have now put a strain on cities all over this country to respond. And as I talk to my counterparts around the country, this is a tough situation. Well, we want to do the very best we can. We have finite resources, and we cannot and will not put our cities in a financial uh, mode of crises uh, trying to address this, and so we don't want to also hurt those who are asking for our help who are coming from other countries where crises are also uh, befalling them. And so we ask our local, our federal officials, put aside politics, address this issue of immigrations, uh, immigration. It is at a crisis point right now, and cities all over this country are being faced to deal with something that we're not equipped to deal with. So I'll stop there and we'll open it up for any questions you may have in the back. Well, again, as a mayor of Denver, Colorado, I can't address uh, the political situation in Venezuela or Nicaragua uh, or other uh, Central South American uh, countries that uh, the asylum seekers are, are coming from. Uh, but I can tell you, we are aware, as a nation, we're aware of the challenges in those countries. We're aware that their desire to come to the United States. And with that awareness, our federal government and Congress have not acted appropriately to address it. 
uh, to help us all as a nation to address it. And so that's why I made the call, the, you know, the last statement I made. There's, you know, we, we, get, we can engage. We know that people are fleeing Venezuela uh, for political purposes and, and, quite frankly, economic purposes. The country is in trouble. And you hear of some of the asylum seekers that we've spoken to making $40 a month, you recognize the critical nature of their economic situation. How many more migrants are you expecting there? I don't know. Uh, we've seen uh, from the numbers that I look at on a daily basis anywhere from 40 to 170 people coming at one time overnight. So it's we don't know, and that's part of the reason why I'm issuing this, dec this uh, emergency declaration because I don't know uh, when this will stop, but uh, we also got to protect ourselves and we got to also make sure we have the resources to deal with the pressure. And, and to follow up to that, the money, where will this come from? Will the state help pay for this? Will the feds help pay for this? We've had some conversation with the governor, and the governor has, uh, and the state are leaning in, uh, particularly over the last 48 hours, to help us to identify resources, helping us to manage the situation. So we're grateful, and we know that there are some resources that we can uh, pursue with the state and the governor has put on the table, as well as from the federal government. And, um, you know, we will do everything we can, and we'll pursue every avenue to help the city of Denver uh, deal with this effectively and to bring those resources to the city. Is yes. The, is the space is space the most acute need you have? Staffing in space, but we've also asked people for donations. We have obviously the need for personal care items and clothing uh, for the for the individuals who are here. Um, you know, uh, feminine products, personal hygiene products, clothing, particularly small and medium clothing um, for for the men who are here. Um, you know, we need we need it all, but space and staffing, volunteers covering. Uh, the challenges is, is, or the, I would say, the biggest challenges that we have. I saw, I heard a voice over here somewhere. More that the governor or that the state should or could be doing to get in front of this to help you all out. If there's more, we'll ask. Um, and they have stepped up, and we, we are continuing to normalize uh, their role in this. Uh, but the governor has said, "What else you need? You let me know, and we will. I won't hesitate." Can you talk a little bit more about what exactly this um, this emergency declaration is going to do in terms of freeing up your ability to be able to respond? To yeah, it's really a procurement. Uh, really, our internal policies and, uh, and regulations allow me to uh, to to do the necessary expenditures, uh, procurement pr expenditures, without going through our normal procurement process. Uh, allows us to sp expedite our response to some of the to the challenge that we're faced with. Any idea how much you all spent so far? In excess of eight hundred thousand dollars, the city of Denver has expended uh, since we activated this emergency operations center, um, and we're still calculating. Yes. What's the takeaway for the residents of Denver? What do you want them to know? What should they be doing? What kind I, well, I think one, we're continue to exercise um, this as a city that recognizes the humanitarian crises that we're facing. Um, that the entire city has been called to action to help abate and and effectively deal with the situation. I think that's important. We ask for their patience with regards to the utility of a couple of the recreations, two or three of the rec centers. We know they're important in the life of our city. This is not what our recreation sensor centers are built for, and we're going to try to uh, free them up as quickly as possible. But please be patient with us as we try to deal with this very sudden surge in um, migrants and asylum seekers coming to us. Um, and know that uh, we're going to be good trustees of our resources as best we can to, to protect our city, but also to be a place that continues to be welcoming and, and to exercise humanitarian values. Is it still the belief that the... Um, or is, is it still of the belief, the city's belief, that these are self-organized using social media and other um, means? For the most part. We also know that uh, there are uh, NGOs on the ground down in, at the border encouraging them to come to some cities that are outside of Texas into other cities, including Denver. How is going to be the process for those that they are looking for political asylum here in Denver? Uh, you'll have to ask the federal government on that one. I, I don't know the step-by-step the -step process. Um, but that's why we're engaging and will continue to engage and update our, our delegation and federal agencies on what the requests are uh, for those individuals who are on the ground. Yes? Have you heard from neighboring cities or other entities in Colorado seeing similar situations, or is it pretty much consensus? Yeah, well, I've heard from some mayors they haven't seen very many. Sounds like there were, there, you were somewhere in a neighboring city where there been more there. I did send a letter to um, our regional mayors. Um, asking for their engagement as well, and as they see more of it, make sure we're collaborating on this. So this is a uh, we, we can act regionally as we have on so many other challenging issues. But no one has proactively called and said we've got so many or, or, or a surge here as well. 
But you got to recognize this. You know, I've been asked why are you dealing with this? I'm like, we are the capital city. The buses stop in our city, and uh, the the migrants and asylum seekers don't know where to go, uh, and people are directing them to our shelter system, which is, makes it a logical sense. Um, but we, at the same time, are trying to respond uh, to uh, our own house in Denver, um, which are at a which is at an unprecedented level, um, and so it's overwhelming our shelter system, and so we have to respond. Um, as best we can to, to help them. Do you anticipate using more recreational centers to house more if needed? I'll just simply say this. We, we are asking our residents for patience. Uh, we uh, know that our rec centers are not built for this. This is not what they're for. We're going to try to return them as quickly as possible. And our goal is the more we can get more, you know, some other institutions in the city to help us, the less we'll have to call on other rec centers to, to, uh, to be involved in this effort. Have you had any direct conversations with the Our Congressional Delegation? Yes. Yeah. Well, they are helping us. Uh, we've had direct conversations with them, or my, uh, my entire ledge team and, and the chief of staff as well. I've had direct conversations with a couple of them. They're going to help us, uh, one, carry the continue, continue to carry the message in Congress, but two, um, get federal resources to Denver to help us in this situation. Okay. Not so much, you know, particularly send you back to El Paso. Um, we are working to re to unify people with their family and friends they have here. So I can tell you firsthand that we have sent uh, some of the migrant and asylum migrants and asylum seekers to other cities because they have we verify they have family there looking for them, and so we've helped them get where they needed and desire to go. Mr. Mayor, can you talk a little bit more about the, the 800,000, what our breaking point is, and do you, what percentage of that 800,000 you hope that we'll be able to recoup from the state or federal government? It's hard to comment right now on what we'll be able to recoup, but we are taking copious notes and <laughs> records of every expenditure that we make so that we can follow the proper process at the state and federal levels uh, to, to uh, recoup those dollars. Those are some, the dollars that I just alluded to and we're still calculating include the cost of all of these men and women who have uh, left their normal duties um, to now man this um, center as well as the shelters. And again, many are working long shifts in those centers to, uh, so we are paying them their, their salary while they're doing that. Um, and this, so this is normal course, but we calculate once we activate the emergency operations center. So we're still calculating what that is. And then their hard costs. Uh, where we've had to spend for food, clothing, cots, um, security, um, those type of hard costs. And so uh, we do have most of that broken down. Uh, I've seen a list of it, and uh, we, can, we, you know, we know we're still calculating all of that, but uh, that's about where we are. Has it been hard to uh, reunite uh, migrants with their families? Has it been a difficult process? Is there someone here in direct? Evan, you want to respond to someone with more direct knowledge of the reunification process? I got I got I got as someone comes up they're welcome to I have I, when visiting the center I met with the team that was doing the reunification so there's a team dedicated to just that process and um, and it's been all over the country where they've had family um, as far as New York and New Jersey uh, as well as California Hello, everyone. Mimi Sherman, Chief Operating Officer with Denver Human Services S C H E U E R M A N N um, We are not having difficulty reunifying people in the sense of getting them transportation. The weather, however, has been quite uncooperative. Many buses are getting canceled all over the country. So we are having an influx and unable to get them moving along because of the transportation challenges. Thank you, that's good. Maybe a couple more questions. Yeah, the, do the expenses for, to transfer these immigrants to other cities according to their request, that is included in the 800,000? Yes, okay. yes. Yes, and Mimi, uh, well, well, that's included in the 800,000, okay. yeah. And Any how are they continuing to arrive? I know there was various modes of uh, transportation. How are they still arriving? Various modes of transportation. <laughs> <laughs> not to be not to be smart aleck, but that's the answer. They're, they're coming mostly by bus, but various modes of transportation. Mostly by bus, you said? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Any others? Does, your, the, does the city feel they can keep up with the need now, or do you feel behind just because maybe the, the nonprofits or churches that you're hoping for haven't haven't supported yet or are trying to get things 
No, they've been tremendous. I, I, this system, this dike would have been broken had it not been for our churches and nonprofits that have stepped up, our individuals who have provided services and donations to help us to, to get to this point. Um, we're thankful to them, and, I, and we, we, need, we need more, obviously. Um, and let me just say this. This is, you know, every dollar that the city expends is an opportunity cost. Um, to our normal day of, of operating the city and moving the city forward. That's why we're reaching out to the state. We've reached out to the federal government because at some point that's got to, you know, that burden on the taxpayer of Denver has to be uh, lightened. And that's also why we're really encouraging our federal government, particularly Congress, um, to get off the, the politics and to really address this crisis that has existed before the pandemic, that existed before um, this moment and, and, and recognize that we've got to fix this immigration issue. I'm not trying to sound political, but I'm trying to say pra pragmatic and practical. This is going to continue to happen, continue to overwhelm cities all over this country until Congress works on fixing this situation. Thank you all very much.